Welcome to another session. This time we're exploring ink and pen work. There's a lot of different things to be said and a lot of things we could explore with ink alone and how we can use it. And you can see I have a few, um, few tools in front of me here which are old dipping pens and a whole lot of nibs in there. You can see up close I can show you these. Originally before the invention of the inner chambered pens like fountain pens and what we know now as art pens and fine liners people needed to use um, something they literally physically dipped into ink and feathers were used for a very long time because of their natural um, ergonomics with the hand and they were fastened with a um, with a tip like this with one of something like this a rounded metal piece made into a very sharp fine tip with a split down the middle split down in there which allows the ink to roll down the uh, the nib all the way to the point. Now there's no need to go and think you can't draw in pen if you've only got fine liners at home, they're, they're awesome, they're perfect because the ink is all in there, you don't get messy, you don't need to worry about getting these nibs and these specialized tools. You've got everything you need probably in your house right now to do what we're about to do. There's a few different kinds of um, fine liners that you can um, that you can get, mostly from newsagents or uh, uh, major craft supply stores, even um, discount variety stores have some decent pens. But the only real difference is the thickness of the tip, the, the very top, and that is defined by a measure or a number you'll find usually on the cap or somewhere on the pen barrel. But for our purposes, they're all pretty well going to be in a very similar orbit. So the finest is point, well, one of the finest is zero, zero, five. That's very, very small. It's for incredibly detailed, tiny work. Where you can see how detailed I can get with that pen. The other thing to think about in terms of the quality of the ink you're using is if you're going to be doing other mediums on top, anything that's water-based, you might want to look at something which is waterproof. It'll say again on the barrel whether something is permanent and waterproof or just permanent. There's different qualities of the ink that are injected into these pens. So with something like this one here we have a 0 0.5, which is about, it's just a little bit thicker and larger than that S. Across the different brands they have different markings but basically take the cap off have a look at the thickness and go, yeah, that's something I'd like to work with. Pressure is important with the pens. You don't want to go too hard. Um, you don't need to because there's, there's no, no difference in, in the pressure you apply as there is with charcoal or, or a dry material. They're going to do the same job whether it's a light touch or a really thick, heavy touch, really. The, the risk you run with over-pressurizing the pen is that the tip recedes back down into the into the chamber and, uh, and then you basically lose your pen, it's ruined. It's really hard to fix a pen that, that's been damaged that way. Anyway, you can see I've already started to do a little bit of hatching work. So hatching is one of the, the principal techniques with, uh, with pen work, obviously aside from just straight up line drawing. But if you're new to pens or you, you enjoy using pens but you've just been doing form and straight line drawings, it might be a good exercise just to do something like what I'm doing here, where I'm just making different angled strokes over and over again on the paper. And you can see them all, so I'm sort of following some of the older lines I did. I'm leaving a little gap where I could come together up here and I could join those lines and go really close together. This is just an exercise too in, in hand control. Oh, I'm going to go that way and I'm going to split off from there. So sort of start curving around here. I'm going to go far apart and really big like that and then come back around this way. So far, farther apart gives the illusion of something that might be less dense. And the closer we go together, the more dark, the darker and the the more dense it looks until I'm almost basically doing a straight line but in a series of tiny little hatching marks. So if I keep doing that, 
I'm going to come up to a point here, turn that corner, and then recede back into that there. Now, <clears throat> this is just a fun way to kind of loosen your mind again. It's, a, it's almost a training exercise or a practice in meditation. Um, you can get a bit uncomfortable. Your hand can start to sort of feel a bit restricted. Just take your, your eyes, take your hand off the page, stretch your fingers, stretch your whole arm out, you'll be fine. But don't overdo it. If you start to get to a point where your fingers are really, really hurting, then don't uh, continue, obviously. Come back to it later. So I'm going to just keep going with this. If, you, if you've got a couple of different types of fine line pens around, you can try various sizes. So I might go back to that. I've got a point 0.4 here. This is one of the most common pens, art line pens. It's really nice middle of the range fine fine pen. Point 0.4, point 0.5 is what you're looking for in terms of a really utilitarian, a really practical pen to have. Again, not, not expensive, easy to find. And if you don't have a pen like this at home, it doesn't really matter. You can use a black Bic Biro. It will do a very similar job. It's just a little bit, it just takes a fraction longer to dry. And so then you need to be careful about where you're placing the side of your hand when you're drawing. You can see the different sort of qualities I'm getting from these different uh, sizes of the, of the tip, the, the nib of the pen. What I can start to do now, I've got all these single hatchings here. I can go back over certain parts in almost an opposite direction, like that. So that's going to give me a double darkness. It's going to start to create. more intense texture and the, the closer I go here the more deep and differential it is from the other illusionary lines so I'm sort of just working my way around I can decide for myself and just go wherever I want I, I want to keep some areas which, which are a little bit lighter in those middle parts just for that contrast but I can just begin to invent what I'm going to do next if you like, you come to a certain point, you can start to draw straight lines to define those little gaps between each of the different hatching areas. And you can always add more lines if you're you know, not happy with how it's all flowing. Create a whole new area there, a whole new zone in there. It's very much an intuitive process. But it's about that practice of hatching, controlling your line, controlling your hand, paying attention, being focused, but also learning how the pen is working. You can always rotate your paper just slightly as well, and this gives you more access to different angles, different energies. Every, every line has a kind of energy, depending on where it's going, what it's doing. And that might sound a bit silly, that might sound like <laughs> very, very <laughs> abstract, but it's true. When you start to look at how you might draw hair on a, on a, on a character, a cartoon character, or standing up straight, it gives you that, that fright because it's all up, pointing out in different directions upwards. Same if we use curved lines going down and slow, like the drooping sad face, right? It has a different energy than pointy hair, and it's all just lines. So what I'm doing here is just going to continue to do this. I encourage you, invite you to do something similar. It can take a long time. I find it quite meditative. I've done some works in the past which have been, when they're finished, um, quite quite interesting. I wouldn't say masterpieces. I wouldn't say sort of finished, maybe, but definitely interesting in terms of just how much control and practice you can get with um, yeah, with defining that, that pen work for yourself. Always in, you know, consider incorporating a different coloured pen as well. There's heaps more colours out there than black, but in the uh, interest of brevity, 
let's call that one an exercise uh, that we can that we can try. I'm going to continue here to do this one. I'm quite excited, but uh, I might get back to you a bit later and we'll do some um, some brushwork with the ink. We'll do some washes. Thank you.